This is a rather unusual eBay find. It's a roulette wheel out of a classic British amusement arcade game where you had a huge machine and right in the middle was this plastic dome with this wheel underneath and every so often it would spin and launch the ball into orbit then it would stop and go in the opposite direction and go around slowly to find out where it had landed and pay out accordingly if you had chosen those colours. So I've roughed up some software to show you this. I'm going to take the ball off initially and I'll put it on afterwards. But when this runs, there is going to be a lot of movement on the screen. This thing is going to be spinning. Goodness knows what the YouTube compression algorithm is going to make of it. But it's going to go into two modes. It's going to go into the launch mode, which is fast. And then after it's done that, it'll suddenly reverse and go into slow mode to actually hunt for the ball. So it's about to do that now. Stand by for movement. So this is the launch bit. I should pop that there. And then it hunts at slow speed until the ball lands and it gets a double confirmation it's seen it. Then it launches it across my workbench again and... and, uh, waits for it to land again. I would have liked the whole machine, but uh, that was not practical. It's huge. Uh, but that is it. It looks quite good, very visual, and it sounds quite good too. So... Let's take it to bits. This thing is actually quite big. Far too big for the bench, really. But I shall show you initially that uh, it has... Well, let's show the other end. I'd be better just take the wheel off this, wouldn't I? I would. So here is how the wheel comes off. It, you loosen this off. Oh, it unscrews. Squeaky, squeaky comes off completely a bit like a tap, and uh, then the actual roulette disc comes off. The roulette disc appears to be vac-formed with a printed surface laid in the back before it's vac-formed, I'm guessing. It's quite neat. It's very stylish. It's very colourful. I think this is an anti-slip pad. There is also an indent hole here with an extra layer of plastic put in here to give it extra support where it attaches to the shaft. Um, just for strength, I guess. But that indent hole is quite important because it references with the highest pain uh, and the only one of it, 1 in 25 chance of getting white. Here is the mechanism itself. I'm going to focus down onto that, just in case it's not in focus. I could actually just power this up again. Hold on, I will power it up again so you can see the mechanism operating. Things worthy of note. There is a big step on motor here, a 5 volt step on motor. I had to drive it with much more than 5 volts. Uh, there is an optical detector board screwed onto a convenient piece of wood. These were all pretty much handmade, so there's little features like that. It, it, Probably these days they might 3D print something, but the order's absolutely fine. So there's an optical slot detector, and reference to that zero position is this little flag that passes through that. There's also an inductive sensor that detects... Well, I'm just going to show you. Where is the ball? The ball has gone into orbit, I think, so... Yeah, but anyway, it detects the ball passing over the top of this. There it is. Uh, just by its vicinity to the inductive sensor. So I shall power this up, and it will short... Short? It will shart spinning again. Oh, you know what? It's not like that, is it? It's not got the inertia to actually go up to full speed so the step motor is skipping. I had lots of problems with that when I was doing this. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't want to play, does it? Oh, that's noisy. Anyway, I shall stop it. It's fine at the low speed, but it's it needs the inertia of the disc to get up to the higher speed. And a ballistic curve, you may have heard that. Uh, and that is more or less it. So, big fat motor here. Astrosyn. Stepper motor. 5 volts. Uh, 1.8 degrees, 1 amp, 5 ohms. Definitely 5 ohms, but I found... Well, maybe there's losses, because here's the circuitry I uh, built to actually run it. It's a ULN2803, uh, which is a octal Darlington driver, but I've paired them up into sets of uh, two. And then there's a PIC-12 microcontroller with a little bit of assembly code just to actually give the ramping speed for the stepper motor and sequence them in the correct order and direction. And an improvised. I was hoping to run the whole lot off 5 volts. There was a little bit of uh, decoupling with this capacitor here and a resistor. In the end, I had to put a 5.1 volt zener in there just to clamp the voltage across the processor because uh, ultimately I had to push it up a lot higher to get the torque required to actually be able to throw it up to the full speeds. I'm not really sure uh, what voltage it uses in the actual 
arcade machine. But uh, that is it. Just put my stuff out of the way. So the unit has three cables. It's got this cable, which is quite thick actually, which is the optical sensor. And what actually happens is that when it slows down, it detects that flag and it starts counting the pulses. And if you divide it down, it worked out about... Uh, oh, I'm going to have to calculate this because of the turns ratio here. Uh, I'm not sure the turns ratio is from that to that, but it works out a fairly large number of pulses and it can count. By counting those pulses, it can determine where it is on the wheel and it resets every time this flag passes. And the flag is just when it's rotating, it's just at the start of the first uh, of the, the first side of the white segment. So if it uh, counts and within that count it sees the ball pass over the inductive sensor, it then rotates for one more revolution. If the ball is still in that position, it will uh, stop the wheel and that's uh, the winning number and then it will launch the ball again and play the next game. However, if it sees the ball pass over and it does a full revolution, it's in a different position, it will reset and it will go another revolution to see it until it sees it's in the same location. And if it doesn't see the ball at all, it will, well, I'm not sure. I don't know what the software would do there. It should hopefully flag it up. Uh, that there's a problem that it's lost the ball in the game. But this is it. It's very robust. It's a very chunky machine. It's me who wrote Whitakers on the side. A uh, good big bearing under there. These machines just run day in, day out in the arcades. The most common problem I see, uh, if you, I'll provide links to videos showing this in operation, uh, the most common problem I see is that the uh, wheel is fine in the low speed, but just as you saw there when it was actually skipping, uh, it was losing traction in the high speed because it is kind of close to the edge for this motor being able to throw that wheel about at a fairly high speed. Um, I ended up turning the voltage up to, just give me a second, 10 volts to actually make it do that. Uh, but that's possibly because there's a bit of voltage drop across the Darlingtons. I possibly have used uh, MOSFETs these days with suitable protection diodes. But there we have it. Uh, the insides of a Whitaker roulette machine. It's very nice, very robust, but then it would be. And when you see it, it's so simple, like just the optical sensor for positioning, stepping water, and the inductive sensor for detecting the ball. It's actually really clever.